this for me, this music, this intro, is like etched in my brain from a, from being a kid. Like where did that soundtrack come from? This just, I mean, just listen to it. It's just amazing. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I do hope you're well. Pretty much four years ago to this exact date, here on the channel, we played a game that was very, very close to my heart. And I've made videos about this game since, but I now have a lot more knowledge and a lot more interaction with the game. And that game is Fantasy Star Online. The video that I mentioned that I made all of those years ago had quite a lot of traction uh, within this sort of space, within the Fantasy Star space, which is quite small. And there are a lot of people out there that have played this game before that still have no idea that it still exists to some capacity through private servers. And I think it'd be really cool and almost like a fan service to the game to try and raise a bit of awareness about it and kind of get the exposure out of it. So I kind of want to make this a bit of a series where we go through the numerous levels of Fantasy Star Online, uh, mainly for sort of nostalgia reasons for people that have perhaps played it in the past or even still playing it now. They just kind of want to chill, kick back uh, and kind of just see the world unfold in front of them and there's some of you that have probably never played it that are thinking hmm this game looks a little bit old but kind of interesting um if you are new to it stick with it trust me it is an absolute gen gem of a game um i thoroughly thoroughly enjoy it so yeah without further ado without me rambling what you're going to see today is me taking one of my characters through the forest level of fantasy star online we're going to enjoy some of the uh the music the background music of this game is fantastic the sound effects the ambient music yeah it's just orgasmic so yeah cool leave a like if you enjoy this sort of content subscribe if you're new here and i'll see you guys in the next one all right guys so here we are on my level 64 hue cast now and this is a guy that i've been grinding for a little while just to kind of uh you know get the levels up there get some new gear and we're going to take Mr. Sidewinder into the forest. Uh, this is on hard difficulty. Uh, just one person. I don't really know how this is going to play out. I could get absolutely demolished here. Uh, I'm sure we'll be fine. Um, hands down, one of my favorite weapons currently at the moment is the Stag Cutlery Double Saber. Um, there's just something so cool about double sabers in pretty much any game, but specifically Fantasy Star Online because they're just, to begin with, they're kind of like you don't really see them that often. Um, we're doing some okay damage here. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Just the move set. The move set is so fucking cool on this thing. Once you combo that last combo, it can do some real, real good damage. One thing I love about the forest, I think it's a fantastic introductory area just because everything from like the enemies to the music just makes you feel like so at ease and so at home but when you go from forest one into forest two it's such a drastic difference like it's such a, a change in pace like you'd really convince yourself that it was just like two totally separate entities altogether. Obviously, a lot of this has been enhanced now because of the private servers, but even back then, you think this game came out like, what is it, like 20 years ago? Maybe more than that, probably more than that. To have all of these little minute details in it, I think is really, really awesome. That's really cool. Other weapons over here. I think we just found this the other day, actually. DB Saber. I could actually hit this thing and do a great deal of damage. I wonder if my Dragon Slayer works any better. Be lucky if you can hit anything. The only thing with the Q cast is your accuracy is terrible. So for anyone that hasn't played this game, the main premise is that we've pretty much discovered a new planet called Ragol. Uh, we're looking to relocate, recolonize. For some reason, we don't want to stay on the fancy spaceship that we're currently on that has all of the amenities. Um, there's some unusual activity that's been noticed on the surface of the planet. So you first go into the forest, fight all the bad guys. Um, uh, yeah, you have a companion called Red Ring Rico, and she goes missing. So there is an element of searching for her. Um, and that kind of plays into the, into the lore slightly. But for the most part, if you're not interested in the lore, you kill stuff, you get new gear, you level up. The new gear you use to kill stuff more, you level up again, and the grind continues. And that is pretty much it. 
Um, it sounds really like surface level, really boring. Um, it's weirdly not. It's uh, super addictive. Just you get to a point where you feel like maybe you're getting a little bit bored then you get a new weapon or you unlock a new difficulty or you unlock a new mag or I don't know if you're playing for example if you're playing as a uh, technique user you can unlock different level versions of the spells or techniques as they're called and we're not going to bother with those crates because there is no point we're too high level for stuff like that um yeah and it just it just keeps the the grind interesting but where it really starts to open up is i'm starting to see now when you get into the very hard territory and ultimately into ultimate the red drops so the rare drops that come in the form of red boxes are what you're looking out for um they really do keep it like super super interesting and it's like the rare drop system is as like surface level as you want it to be like if you just want to go in um and then just kill enemies in the hopes that you'll get something you can do that but if you really want to grind for a specific weapon you can ultimately like set up certain search parties for certain weapons there's whole loot tables that can show you where items can drop from from what enemies the chances to drop i mean this game has some ridiculous drop rates and i don't mean in a good sense like it is probably one of the most grindy games for drops that you could ever play for example a lot of the drops in the game are tied to certain section IDs. Um, if you are new here and you don't know what a section ID is, then a section ID is based on the characters and how many characters you place in your name. You can see here that mine at the bottom right hand corner is Pinkle. Um, terrible for, for a Hue cast, absolutely terrible. I luckily didn't care too much about mine. I was happy just to play the game. <coughs> but there are certain section IDs that are better for certain drops and certain them which certain ones which are vital certain drops as well which you cannot you physically cannot get that drop you're looking for with anything else it has to be a certain section id so therefore you're then ultimately asking someone to host who has that section id to say look i'm hunting for this weapon can you host a lobby and they'll do so and vice versa otherwise the only way to get that weapon is to start a new character um but yeah it's it's super super in depth i as a side note i absolutely love this little area here just with these little streams and the waterfall in the background and even if you can just drown my voice out for a little while and listen to the the background music here i think this is just unreal um how they found the inspiration for the backing track and even the um title screen music is just crazy to me absolutely crazy so this is what I mean by the difference between Forest 1 and Forest 2. This is very like, oh fuck, like this place really isn't that nice. You know, you can see these like crashed pods here. Um, it's all dark. It's very gloomy. One of the coolest features I liked is these kind of like, almost like water pumps, like water generators. And then you can see the, the stadium over the back there. Obviously, later on in this sort of area, the enemies change slightly as well. Everything just gets a, like, a little bit more serious. still think the double saber is so cool, man. Yeah, these are like no real threat to us whatsoever. I remember that on Dreamcast, the, the first time that I approached this area, I was like, oh, okay. Like, this is a bit different. <coughs> and then, depending on the spawns you get, there can be these big Hilda bears that will jump in from the outskirts of the arena um, and they will take you by surprise and they can actually land on you and flatten you and if you're low low level low hp they can really do some damage sometimes you've got to activate these just to get uh, the enemies to spawn yeah there you go For the sake of just killing these guys let's switch over i also really enjoy the different transition the music as well goes like it's not it doesn't just cut off it just goes into that nice like slow paced kind of ambient like everything's fine and then obviously when things aren't it's like yeah no you need to like you need to panic now whoever came up with the idea of like this three stage combo for these attacks is actually a genius because it seems surface level like 
oh, you just do three attacks and that's it. But they're, they're so situational. There's situations, especially as you get later on and you level up more, where certain weapons you'll only do two attacks with. Like, for example, the sword typically is really bad to finish off a combo with because you go into this, like, locked-in jump kind of stance and you can't really get out of it. Um, same with this, actually. Same with the double saber. Like, once you do, like, this combo here and into this, you're there for so long trying to unwind it. So we go one, two, three. That locks you in that for ages. Like one, two, and then you're just stuck there. Some of the spawns in this forest too as well can really catch you off guard. Like if you're super, super low level and you, you can tell when you're really under leveled for an area because the enemies won't just damage you. They'll like, when they hit you, they'll just like drop you to the floor. One thing I absolutely love about playing a Hue cast is the constant, like, passive regeneration of health if you're standing still. Like, it doesn't help a massive amount, but it is nice if you get chip damage or if you just take minor damage somewhere. Like, this is this is a really nice area to just kind of sort of step back and take a look around. Quite a lot of the time when I used to play this, like, if you just had a few buddies that you just wanted to chill with, we would often just sort of come down to the forest and just just talk shit really it's just that kind of area where you can just kind of relax it's not really too serious yeah so here's the big boys these are the ones where it was like especially when you were like a low level it was like fuck around and find out you know if these came in like out of nowhere you knew you were in trouble that first attack there is terrible to charge by the way yeah, you see how long it left me like in the animation there I remember the first time I started fighting the wolves, actually, and uh, I was like, oh, these guys, these guys do nothing. Like, oh, I'll just, like, turn and, like, move away a little bit, and then they just pounce on you like that. And, like, if you're really low level, they just flatten you. Absolutely flatten you. Like, it's no joke. That distinct sound right there is... When you first start this game, it is the sound of nightmares. It's horrible. It's horrible to listen to even now. Yeah, so you can access these little beacons, and... It will kind of give you a bit of information about the background. I've always found these like really, really interesting because the game doesn't do an awful lot of telling you about the lore as, apart from like text. Um, so to kind of like read into it and make your own speculation, your own lore is, is really interesting. Then like when you're like brand new and the first time you come across like a teleporter like this, you're like, okay, like, this is about to get real. This for me, this music, this intro, is like etched in my brain from a, from being a kid. Like where did that soundtrack come from? This just, I mean, just listen to it. It's just amazing. So we do far more damage now. So he'll get to a certain point where you can't damage him anymore, which is now. And he'll have to go through another phase. There's nothing you can do. But this whole area, like listen to this synthy kind of theme tune. Like imagine you load in with some of your buddies, first time you come across the dragon that's an experience mate that is an experience uh, i know like if you're kind of brand new to it i've never played it before and you're just kind of looking in i can fully appreciate like how hard it is to get around the fact that a lot of this is just nostalgia but i promise you if you can go back to the time where i mean online rpgs for consoles just didn't exist it just wasn't a thing the pc market we actually leveled up from that holy shit um the pc market was pretty much the only way that you could play online rpgs so to find one that uh, just come to the dreamcast and what the dreamcast did for those games was just nuts um so being able to load into a game like this with, with your buddies is i was just groundbreaking most of my time i spent playing offline um but yeah the, the ability to play this game online with friends was just unreal um and to load into these areas, listen to the to the soundtracks, and oh, it, this is why to this day, this is why I'm still playing PSO because, in my opinion, there's nothing out there that that tops it. It really isn't. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of video. That will bring us to the close after killing the dragon. We had to make sure that we step away from the dragon when the dragon dies because he will squish us. If you're too lower level, you will die. So avoid that. Um, yeah, like for more content like this, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.